why do we make the distinction? It's like, God damn it's it. It's a weird distinction. I mean, it's an intelligence distinction. Yeah. We just decide the fish are stupid as fuck. But you know what they're not? Here's, the, here's where they're not. Here's one thing we eat all the time that is probably as smart as a monkey, and that's an octopus. Oh, I know, yeah. We eat octopus all the time. They are crazy smart. Have you yeah. ever seen the, the new video that they put out of an octopus going through a key, a, a hole rather, that's yeah. the size of a quarter? Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I did see that. It's crazy. It's it's amazing. Like, Mc, what Mc, they can do to their bodies is insane. Uh, yeah, McKenna loved them, right? Like oh, yeah. He was like yeah. in love with octopi. Is that mm -hmm. the plural? Octopi? That's a good question. He was in love with I them. I think man. it is. He thought that they were like the ability to have multiple appendages that, and, and, and the, the crazy camouflage abilities they have would combine to really... Um, open up new levels of communication that humans don't have because it yeah. seems like he was uh he was a little frustrated by the limitation of the human vocabulary and our, our, the way we emote things to articulate the universe so it'd be nice to have a bunch of different limbs that had no bones that you can turn any which way while shifting colors that beats fucking emoticons by a long <laughs> shot man <laughs> I mean, they can change color and yeah. they shoot ink into the air. And he, he was one that I first heard speculate that the ink, when they shoot ink into the air, that it might be like eraser fluid. Like, look how small that hole is. And look at this big ass octopus get through this tiny hole. I mean, you would look at that hole and you would be like, there's no way. But these things, not only can they get out of a hole like that, but they can walk on land for long periods of time, climb back up into their fish tanks, lift the lid, get inside. I mean, they're aliens, man. That's, I mean, that might as well be on another planet. We're just used to it because it's on Earth. That thing has a giant bulbous head, long movable arms. It knows how to unscrew jars. And he's got like a kind of like cool, relaxed look on his face. Yeah. Just like he's, he's definitely they're, relaxed. They're emotionless. They're very strange. It's a very strange being. It's very different than a fish. And, uh, but it lives with fish, so fuck it. <laughs> I mean, they're probably as smart as whales. Everything is alive. That's yeah. the ultimate thing. The, that's the final place you got to get to is yeah. that you are a part of a super organism that is stretching through time in the form of every generation of thing that ever lived. Right. And it's currently like a it's like this being that has an infinite number of appendages that represent all living forms of life on earth and just like the same way that like you investigate a thing all these append appendages have wrapped around the planet and they're probing 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 the planet so it's like every living thing is the very end of an interdimensional super intelligent appendage you know this is kind of like the uh uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where he said that mice are just the uh, ends of the tentacles of an interdimensional creature studying scientists, that laboratory mice. <laughs> <laughs> he was a fucking genius. But um, wow. in the same way, when you look at like every single living being on Earth is actually protruding from a, a, a you know generation after generation of being that stretches back to the beginning of organic life on planet Earth. So it's like Earth suddenly gets life. How? Who the fuck knows? My theory, aliens. But who knows? Right. Maybe it just randomly happened. Who knows? But so suddenly springing from the Earth are these very rudimentary organisms that over the course of millennia gradually stretched out and changed to become various types of devices to study the crevices, crannies, and, and, and air of this planet until eventually it became monkeys and the monkeys became people. And now we're like a very advanced scope that is peering into the atomic and subatomic level of the fucking thing. But when you look at a squirrel's life, an eagle's life, a fucking uh, salmon being eaten by a bear's life. It's interesting to consider that what you're seeing is an infinite number of scopes through which something that appears to be either investigating this dimension or just enjoying being in it is coming through. You know, that seems to be what's happening. That is an idea that gets echoed in, um, uh, in, in like some Eastern philosophies and 
uh, some. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting take on it for sure. 